Hello, welcome to Charlie's Garage. In this video, we are doing a complete rewire of the 1968 Mustang. So you might be asking yourself, why rewire the old Mustang? Well, because it's a 50 year old wiring harness, it's got some issues. And we recently had a short, which caused us to uh, burn and melt some items. You can see I got some nasty burnt wires right there. Uh, you can see right here where that melted um, and there's some worse places on here you can see where the tape started to melt and burn right there got some insulation on other pieces that's completely gone uh, so ultimately uh, just decided to do the whole wiring harness um, first thing I would do anytime I'm doing a rewire of a classic car if it's not one that I have already I go to uh, this website right here, classiccarwiring.com. I'm not getting paid to advertise this, but getting a full laminated layout of the entire car's wiring harness that's accurate down to wire terminal colors, stripes, shows you all the connections, where exactly where everything goes is really valuable because especially if you're doing a, a rewire, rewire where you're replacing every wire yourself, you're going to need something like this. Uh, personally, I found another harness like this one on eBay that is in really good shape that I'm going to put in, but I'm going to do a few modifications. So what I have already done to the car is we'll take a walk over here and I'll show you. Uh, so up here on the uh, dash, I got the uh, donor wiring harness right here. Uh, it's in really good shape uh, But what I've already done under the hood is I've already replaced the underhood wiring harness um, with a brand new one uh, So this underhood wiring harness it comes in and it comes along The base right here and this is going to have a wire right here for oil pressure sending unit It's going to have a wire for your cooling temperature sending unit and then down here it has wires for your voltage regulator which i don't have anymore because i went to a one wire alternator and it has all the connections for the headlights the turn signals and the side marker lights um, i also since i was replacing those i decided to go ahead and go with a, a set of led headlights which i've already got installed and we bought some new hood lights that are going to go up here uh, for the turn signals the LED ones and uh, kind of shine it up, class it up a little bit. Uh, so the part under the hood is pretty self-explanatory. It just comes out through the firewall, grows along the side here, and goes up to the front of the engine where the lights are. Nothing real complicated about that. The uh, underhood wiring uh, usually begins under the hood. If you look inside underneath the car, uh, I know it's kind of dark here. But these are the uh, connectors that the underdash wiring harness is going to connect to. So this is the end of the underhood harness right here. So as you can see, I got it gutted pretty good here. So the old harness is already out. We're going to start putting the new harness in. But I am going to make one major modification with this. Uh, I'm going to replace the old fuse box, right? So the old fuse box is this guy right here, and it's the old glass tube type fuses. Um, with my car having an electric uh, fan, electric water pump, uh, aftermarket stereo and amplifier, I need more fuses than this, and I don't want a bunch of inline fuses all over the car. So what I'm doing is I'm replacing this with a 12 fuse ATO fuse type, the little blade type fuses. So what I have to do is I have to take the new harness that I got sitting up on the, on the fender and I'm going to have to cut these wires that come into this fuse box. And I've already traced every single one of these wires to what they go to and where the power is coming into it from the ignition switch, from the battery. And so that way I can put that wire that new uh, fuse box in there and then I'll have fuses for my accessories that I've added as well as be able to uh, rewire the fuses fusing for the existing wiring so that's kind of where I'm at right now is I'm going to cut the 
fuse box out and wire in my own. So if we come back over here, uh, small garage issues. So if we come back over here, you can see where I've made my notebook here and I've got where every color wire, what it goes to and how to do it. I would never go into this just snipping and cutting and, and crimping because it's easy to make a mistake. By having it all planned out, you really make sure you're doing it right the first time. So when we look at this guy right here, we pull this up here, you can see that you have the fuse box right here, which is your old standard glass type. And we are going to be replacing that with this guy right here. Of course, I'm gonna be trimming some of the wires on this guy because I already got an existing harness, but we're gonna be putting this fuse box in its place. All right, so as you can see, we're still working on the wiring mess that's in this dash, but we got the main harness installed under here. We've got some connections made down at the headlight, the Underwood wire, wiring harness. Uh, we've got the uh, turn signal switch installed and we got it connected. Um, just FYI, for those of you guys that might be also working on a 68 Mustang, these two wires here are listed in on Google after some intensive searching because I couldn't find them on my schematic. These are not used in the 68 Mustang Coupe, but they are used in things like Cougars and Fairlanes that use the same harness. So if you uh, hook up your uh, turn signal harness, you got two extra wires. It's nothing to be super concerned about. That's, usually, that's normal. So we're going to continue working on this. Um, find some hot wires from underneath the hood that go to the starter solenoid. So get the wiring on the right side of the under dash done. And then we can come over here and start working on making sure that we got our grounds connected. So there's a little ground wire on the harness that grounds right here. Uh, we got to check out and make sure that we have all the connections made. Uh, and then double check for loose wires. And then we will connect the batteries and see what we got. Um, and then after we get the main wiring harness completed, then it's putting the digital dash back in, which I'll show you guys how that works. It's pretty interesting. And then we're going to be swapping out from my normal radio to my seven inch LED screen here. And we're going to see how that works out as well, because it also is equipped with a backup camera. Uh, so a little bit of uh, modern technology in the old 68 here. Uh, so stay tuned. There'll be more in this video coming up. All right, so since we're going to go ahead and be putting all this new wiring and stuff on, I went ahead and bought a new dimmer switch. So we're going to mount the dimmer switch, and I had to pull the carpet back so you can see down here on the floorboard uh, where the dimmer switch mounts. It's kind of awkward because it's those holes right there, they're really close to the side here, uh, which means you need to put the connector on first before you put it down there and screw it in. Otherwise, you don't have enough room to pull the connector out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that first. But we got to find the uh, right connector for it. So we come down here to our wiring harness end and we look here. And uh, this one has uh, way too many connectors for that guy. We only have three. We look right here and we find a uh, three wire connector. So that's the one that's going to go on there. So we're going to hook up our connector, get this put in and then work from there and find out where everything else goes. So stay tuned. All right, so a quick wiring update for you guys. So, so far, what I've got is I got this put in, right? So those are my new turn signal uh, LEDs. And I've got the new harness installed uh, under the dash. Not all plugged in and everything, just kind of laid out. Uh, so now the next step under here is gonna be going in and uh, plugging everything in, checking things for continuity and ground with the DMM, make sure nothing's going to fry when I uh, did reconnect the battery. Uh, but before I go and start messing around with that, the next thing I need to do is right here on the turn signal switch. You can see I got it out right now. And on those turn signals, the uh, this guy right here, it does not like to come out through that steering column with the old switch. So you have to cut the connector off and then you get the new turn signal switch comes like this. Uh, so you have two choices when it comes to this guy. 
You can have the uh, special tool that helps you push down in there and unclip these and pull them out. And these here are just pushed in place. So you push them in and they self-lock. Um, or you can cut them off and then uh, just uh, butt connect them together, which isn't the best method to use, but if you don't have that tool, you may not have a choice. So that's currently what I'm working on right now is just getting uh, the turn signal installed. And then when I get done with that, we'll hook up everything in the harness and I'll give you guys another update. So just a heads up. So I got the turn signal switch installed. Um, this thing just threads in and out. You don't want to get it too tight, just hand tight, but you need to put it in so that you can move it back and forth to get to those two screws there. The one on the bottom, one on the top. And then you have a third screw that holds it in over here on the uh, left side, or right side, I'm sorry. And uh, make sure your uh, emergency flasher isn't bound up or hitting on anything right here. Um, and then uh, don't make the mistake of putting your connector on, right? You don't want to connect this connector to the wiring harness until you've run it through the wiring column so you're gonna have to do this in the car after you've run this through uh, but it's long enough that you can easily pull it up here and do it while you're sitting so it's not uncomfortable to do uh, but just make sure that you keep that in mind all right so where we're at now with the wiring project is we got the underhood stuff or under dash stuff pretty much hooked up the lighting part is completed and what we've got to worry about now is the stuff that comes out of the passenger side of the uh, firewall. Uh, we're going to want to uh, basically take each of these wires out from underneath the dash, identify where each of them go to, and then uh, rewire them to connect them to the under dash wiring harness. So what we got going on here is that this wiring harness right here, you can see it has some uh, wires here uh, and it goes way down low in this uh, firewall down by the exhaust manifold so the other thing I want to do in addition to pulling them out identifying them and then running them back through and connecting them is to run them through a higher pass point in the firewall so that it's not down by that header uh, that because that header is just putting a lot of heat on that wiring harness so that's not an ideal situation so what i'm currently working on right now is we're going to remove all of this so that we can isolate these wires and then uh, once we're done identifying those wires and able to run them we are going to do something that's going to clean up this uh, mess down here um, so we're not going to need uh, because of the new harness and some of the stuff I've done under the dash, we're not going to need probably this negative and positive bus that I put on here uh, for grounds and for uh, getting a wire, hot wire uh, access point. Um, and I'm not going to need this giant fuse box right here. Uh, the main reason I'm using this giant fuse box was because of this relay setup that's in it. Um, I just think it's going to look nicer and cleaner if I use individual relays mounted down here on the side of the engine compartment um, for the fan and the water pump and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to off camera go ahead and finish taking off this uh, wire protector and this tape and start to get these hoses or wires i mean pulled out from underneath the uh hole in the dash and then identify where they go to and then i'll show you uh, what it looks like after i get it rerouted and hooked up underneath the dash all right guys so when i left off last time we were talking about cleaning up the harness and cleaning up this area right here so as you can see i got rid of that giant fuse block that we had right here um, I did keep one of the wire buses that I'm going to use for power. Um, I did reroute the wires that were coming down by the manifold and put them up higher on there so that they're not so close to that heat source. And um, we have uh, hooked up the batteries and we did do a light test. Uh, we got a couple of issues where the uh, uh, see reverse lights aren't working. All four turn signals come on at the same time when you do a left or right turn and the headlights come on with the ignition switch, which they're not designed to do. Uh, so we got some uh, little wiring gremlins that we need to work out, which is not unusual when you do a big wiring harness change and make some modifications to it. 
Uh, and then uh, once we kind of find those little gremlins and fix those little odds and ends, the only thing that's really left after that is to take these wires here that go to individual components, such as the, the fan and the water pump and stuff and hook up relays to them and then run those relays over here to this area and then put it all into a braided cord and kind of like this one right here uh, so that it looks neat and clean. Um, and then once we get done with that, our next step is going to be to clean up and braid the underwiring harness and reinstall our digital dash. Um, I wish that I had um, gotten this digital dash when I before I started the YouTube channel uh, so I didn't get to film the actual how to do it, but these digital dashes are pretty unique in that they allow you to keep the original look of the original dash assembly, but you just remove the guts um, and then put the new da digital dash assembly inside the old frame. So externally, it looks like your old uh, 68 Mustang dash assembly. Uh, but you have all the digital stuff going on inside of it. So once I get done with the figuring out the gremlins, hooking up the relays, then hooking up this guy, and then we'll see where we're at at that point. So what I'm going to do right now is try to figure out why the uh, headlights are coming on with the switch with the ignition switch instead of the headlight switch, and why I'm having issues with the turn signals. Um, I suspect it's a ground issue, so what I'm going to do is get back underneath here where I hooked up all the wiring components and see if I have some grounds on that uh, underhood cable that I didn't get secure enough or maybe I missed one. So I'll give you guys an update when I get to that point. Alright guys, I'm back. As you can see, there's a lot less wire sticking over the radiator here, so we've done a lot of work since the last break. So the lighting issue, the lighting issue turned out to be a misplaced connector. I connected something that shouldn't have been connected and was having a lot of uh, confusion from the wiring. So when I figured that out, I disconnected them and it, everything started working out well. Um, when you originally um, have your original console and uh, meter assembly and everything in the car, uh, you have these two little smaller separate harnesses that plug into the main harness. Well, when I put my digital dash in, I got rid of those two separate plug-in harnesses. And for some reason, those two ends that are on the main harness plug into each other perfectly well. And if you're not paying attention, you think, oh, well, that's an obvious connection. Well, it's not. So uh, that's where the problem is. But now the headlights, the turn signals, uh, everything is working like it's supposed to as far as external lighting. The only lighting that's not currently working that we still got to work on a little bit is going to be the uh, uh, console light or the dash or the overhead dome light. Uh, that light's still not working, but I, I know what the problem is. There's a couple wires I still need to hook up for that one. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you real quick how I fix this up. And of course, it still looks like a rat's nest in here right now because I haven't loomed anything. Uh, but you can see that um, I hooked up my two relays here. So I got my two relays hooked up to my water pump and my fan. And I've also um, gave them some extra circuit protection by inline fuses. I know earlier in the video I said I didn't want 100 of these all over the car. Um, but your cooling system and your fans are really important. It's a circuit you want to protect. So... Uh, um, definitely worth the extra wire and just to install these two inline fuses to these two relays. So that's where we're at with those. Uh, the other thing that's going on here that I want to show you guys is that um, these are going to relays are going to get. Uh, sorry for the interruption guys my fat fingers pushed a button it shouldn't have <laughs> uh, but anyway the relays are going to be hooked up right here along the side here and then we'll loom all this wire mess together nice black loom so that it uh, doesn't look horrible anymore uh, so what I'm working on right now today is I told you guys earlier about the digital dash and how I wish I hadn't uh, I've made a video of it well it turns out I got to reinstall it anyway so I can make a video kind of explaining it um, the brand that I went with there are multiple brands of digital dashes out there and they're all pretty good um, I just went with Intellitronics because it was uh, the most affordable one for me at the time 
And to be honest with you, while when it was in the car and running before, I never had any problems with this digital dash. So it seems to be a pretty good unit. But anyway, if you did want to put, install a digital dash, you would take this entire head unit here out of your car. You would turn it over like this, and then you would take this backing plate off. All right, you can see it's held in there by a few screws in a few little places. And when you pull that plate off, you would pull the internal gauges and everything that's already in the old one out, and then place this circuit board inside here. On the circuit board, there's a few switches. It's really important that you put them in the right position. That um, the, those uh, micro switches kind of let it know, you know, whether you're using kilometers or miles per hour or a bunch of other options that the switches have to be in the right place for. So you want to make sure you do that before you put this backing plate on. If you don't, you're going to end up taking the backing plate back off just to fix that and then put it back on. And that could be a pain in the butt. So, as you can see, there are a ton of wires coming out of here, and it can be a hot, confusing mess if, you're, if you don't know what you're doing, which is why I never throw away instructions, right? So here's the Intellitronics, right? And here's the name of it if you guys are interested in checking out their website. It's just Intellitronics.com. Uh, they have these dashes, not just for Mustangs, but Camaros and anything else you might be working on um, and for different years. Um, but if you do have a 68 Mustang like I do, there's the part number that I got for it. It's a DP7002. Right? Um, the other part down here is the dash panel instructions. It tells you how to do it. You know how to take tells you to take it apart, put the new one in, right? But the big part is on this back page right here. So it has instructions for what each color wire coming out of this thing is for, right? So uh, this tells you uh, the black is for ground. So we need to find a main ground for all the black wires coming out of this one. Uh, ignition is the pink wire. Uh, that one is the one that's going to basically uh, power this thing up when the key is on. Uh, purple is for the dimmer switch. Do not connect the headlight uh, theostat control wire. The dimming feature will not work properly. Uh, it says connect to the parking lights to dim the LEDs when the headlights are on um, and you can use that or not use it depending on how if you want them to dim or not uh, then it gives you a high beam is the uh, brown wire uh, so basically what you would do is just go to your uh, uh, your dimmer switch and find the wire that sends the power to the high beams and kind of splice this brown wire into that wire uh, the turn signals uh, uh, basically, this is the light on the dash that tells you your high beams are on. Uh, turn signals are gray. Uh, there's two of them, one for each signal. Each wire is labeled on the pinned circuit board as left or right. Uh, so I'll show you guys what that looks like later. Uh, your brake lights are tan. Uh, basically, that's for the brake indicator. Uh, with my new uh, setup, when I did the hydraulic brake conversion, I don't have that uh, brake pressure warning light anymore. So I don't use that one. Uh, your oil pressure is the orange wire. So right here on the engine, uh, down here where you got your oil pressure gauge, there's wire coming off of it. It's going to run straight to that uh, orange wire on the dash for the oil pressure gauge. Um, then we got right here, we got the blue wire is for your water. So that's coming right off of the temp gauge. So right on top of these cars, on top of the uh, intake manifold, right here is my temp gauge. And that thing will run straight to that on my uh, dash. It'll run straight to that blue wire. All right, and then you have the gray wires, which are your trip and calibration buttons. So if you look on this guy, you got a couple of these gray, a couple of these, two of these that have the switches on them with the gray wires attached to them. This is so you can do a zero to 60 time sets and you can do trip calibrations where you can reset the odometer for like an A trip or a B trip like you have on a modern vehicle. Uh, and then you got your yellow one. Uh, that's for your fuel gauge. So you find your existing fuel gauge level sensor that went to the old harness and you just hook it up to the uh, yellow wire on the here for your fuel gauge. All right, and then here is where those toggles I was talking about earlier. Um, it says both toggles need to be in the up position for Ford or Chrysler. For if you're working on a GM vehicle, toggle one is up, toggle two is down. 
so so different uh, vehicles need you to be in different spots. But anyway, this thing is invaluable when it comes to uh, putting uh, installing this guy after you basically pulled the whole harness apart to pull it out and put this new piece in. So the one thing that is nice about most of these companies and especially in Teletronics, and again, I'm not paying, getting paid to do an ad for these guys. I just really like this unit. Um, you can log onto their website and download this installation guide if you lost your original one or let's say they forgot to send you one, which may or may not happen, I don't know. But you can print them off of the website. So they're, they're available even if you do lose them. But I'm a pack rat and this is the original one and I never threw it away. All right. So basically what I need to do is, so we know that from the instructions here that the uh, uh, white wires are basically the power wires, right? So the white wires being the power wires, they all need to go to a fused power source. So that's one of the reasons why I installed that bigger fuse box is so that I could run uh, power to this guy from this. So you could see that when I had my electrical fire, which is what caused me to, uh, to replace the wiring harness in the first place, you can see some of the damage on these wires from that electrical fire. So that electrical fire did affect the wiring on here. So some of these wires I'm gonna have to cut relatively short and hope that I still have enough good wire on there to connect to. Um, and you can see uh, like this guy has definitely seen better days, right? So uh, he's kind of hurting. Um, and this whole wiring uh, harness fire thing started because when I installed this, there was one wire that I didn't notice that I didn't secure and it arced up against the frame up underneath the dash and it started the fire that went all the way from this part of the wiring harness all the way to the front headlights. So that's one of the reasons why I had to do this whole thing in the first place. So I guarantee you that this time around, once we get everything wired up, we are going over this thing with a fine tooth comb, making sure there are no loose wires anywhere on this car that can arc or short, because <laughs> I don't want to do this again. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hook this up, and then we will check in later when we're working on the next part and show you what it looks like. Thanks. All right, so for the most part, the wiring project on the 68 Mustang is done. You can see we finally got her uh, moved out of the garage. I got her here at the school right now. Um, so really what's going on with it now is working out just a few little bugs that we had after the rewire. Everything works great. Turn signals, headlights, brake lights, all that good stuff. So there's three issues that we still need to work out with it. Uh, so number one would be that when you turn the uh, steering wheel, you we have an arc or a short bad ground, something going on in the steering column that is also affecting the headlights, making them flicker. Uh, so we're gonna get a new steering wheel for it, which it needs anyway, because this one's all cracked and starting to break. Um, and then as we take the new old steering wheel off, we'll be able to take a look around in there and see what's going on and fix that issue. Uh, the other one is probably just a switch or a wiring issue with the uh, door switch on this side that open that turns on the dome light. Uh, the passenger side door, the dome light comes on when you open it, but on the driver's side, it doesn't. So that should be a quick and easy thing to figure out and fix. And then the last thing is the stereo. Uh, on the stereo, we got some really bad interference. So we're gonna try a couple of things with that to fix it, such as rerouting the uh, speaker wires to the amplifier from the other side of the car. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. I know it's a long one. I pretty much know everything there is to know about every wire in this car now. So if you need any help with your own Mustang, please let me know. Uh, please like and subscribe.